when you mix captivating entertainment, catchy songs, and emotionally satisfying music with a message that glorifies the creator of all of it. You have the making of a cult. Barney has become the leader of a children's cult. The Barney who they are referring to is, of course, the purple dinosaur from PBS. That quote is from The Purple Messiah, a booklet about the dangers of the prehistoric children's dinosaur from the Free Pentecostal Church. All of this is to say Barney was as big as he was polarizing, and he got big quick. Barney began on video cassette, but was soon picked up by PBS in 1992. Then, shortly after, there was Barney Mania. In 1993, Barney merchandise reached $130 million in revenue. The next year, it fell by $30 million. Market analysts believe that this was due to the oversaturation of Barney products, causing some parents to go as far as joining the I Hate Barney Secret Society, in which you could receive a newsletter for a dollar. He was also beaten up by Charles Barkley on SNL, beaten up at a personal appearance at a mall by teenagers, and was the subject of many song parodies, including I Hate You, You Hate Me, Barney Gave Me HIV, and yet he has persisted. But fatigue had set in. The Power Rangers eventually overtook Barney's popularity, but Barney also had staying power. And even as early as 2001, Barney had sold an estimated 65 million videos. His optimism and love resonated with children and has continued to for almost 30 years. But let's go back to 1998. But let's go back to 1998. The Barney craze was not what it had been, but creator Cheryl Leach decided to make Barney's first film, Barney's Great Adventure. And believe it or not, it included a character that hates Barney. Director, Steve Gomer. I was approached by this guy who I had met at Sundance. He called and he said, look, they're doing a musical, like a musical film. Would you be interested in that? And I said, yeah, you know, I love musical films. So he said, well, it's Barney. And I said, Okay, I said, look, I have no interest in doing the Barney TV show, but if they want to do, you know, a feature, yeah, I'd be, you know, happy to at least talk about it. So he said, okay, I'll set up a meeting. Steve Gomer was an odd choice because his most famous film up to that time was Fly By Night, a movie about young rappers. I don't even, I don't know if he even told the Barney people, you know, I mean, there's not, there's probably not four lines in Fly By Night without someone calling someone else a motherfucker. I, w I went to the, the Barney people who were based in Texas. Um, it, it was an interesting time because at that time, uh, this was like mid-90s, all the studios wanted to do a Barney picture. Um, I mean, they were like pitching, you know, they, they were pitching the Barney people about you know, doing it. It wasn't, they didn't, the Barney people didn't have to go to the studios. All seven studios, which at that time there were seven, wanted to do a feature. Yeah. I mean, like in from one of the studios, I don't know which one, because this was before I came on board, but one of the studios got all the executives together. And when Cheryl drove up, you know, to the, the you know, they had been told that, oh, she's at the gate, you know, she's coming over to your office. They assembled all the executives, you know, and they sang the Barney song, you know, I Love the I Love You song. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> so they, they made a deal with Polygram. They, they felt most comfortable with Polygram, which, you know, is now has been absorbed by Universal. But so we were dealing with, um, you know, the, the London guys on it. Anyway. I met with, you know, the the producers of Barney and the creator, and um, you know, we talked. And my attitude was, you know, my, we have my wife and I. We have two kids, and our daughter, who's the older, 
um, she grew up on Barney. You know, when she, that's when Barney started when she was little. And we lived in New York at that time. And my attitude, both both of our attitudes was, you know, we didn't have that thing <clears throat> that a lot of parents, you know, adults have about Barney where it's too sickly sweet. I mean, our attitude was, you know, the world is a tough place and it, it's okay that, you know, our two-year-old, she's soon enough, she's going to find out, you know, that that there's tough things. So, so we were okay that, you know, it's just this big, happy, you know, lovey kind of creature, right? It, you know, we it was like, okay. So we had a few meetings, we talked about it and they, you know, they liked me and so hired me to do it. And I, they had a script, but the guy who wrote the script, who was the head writer on the TV show, had never read a film script. So the script was like, uh, you know, 200 pages long. I mean, it was, it was really, it was like an encyclopedia. So I said, look, you know, this, this, this is like a three and a half hour film. I don't think that's what you, you guys want, right? And they said, no. So I said, I'd like to work with the writer, you know, and, you know, so they were happy to do that. I still, to this day, doubt that they ever saw the, they ever saw Fly By Night. I, I don't know. They never talked to me about it. I know that, but they hired me to do the picture. And I was happy, you know, and my attitude towards it was, um, I mean, this is the way I looked at it. I looked, I felt like, first of all, Barney is going to probably be the first picture that, you know, many kids see, you know, because, because the target audience for Barney is like two to five. So I, I thought, okay, so they let's do something really special, you know, to, you know, that these kids will remember, you know, when they grow up, you know, it's like get them, you know, involved in, you know, liking movies, you know, so that was kind of my approach. And the other thing, I mean, and this was kind of, you know, uh, bizarre maybe, but, you know, I, I looked at it and I said, well, the Wizard of Oz has people, you know, in costumes, you know, animal costumes, and that's a good picture. So. I just looked at it and thought, well, we can make a good picture, you know, even though there's these uh, dinosaurs in it, you know, with, with you know, f f foam costumes. You know, it kind of went from there. I mean, you know, we scouted many locations, but in my mind, uh, I wanted to work in Montreal because, well, first of all, we could save money, you know, shooting in Canada. But the other thing was, you know, this is when um, Cirque du Soleil was, you know, it was before Cirque du Soleil had, you know, exploded you know and had become this giant thing i mean it was you know people knew knew about them but they didn't have you know six or seven shows running you know in las vegas and shows all over the world and i i wanted to work with them you know i thought i even this was even before we finished working on the script i just felt that there was something about their work you know that would have a good influence on the, on the barney work and um you know talked to them and they agreed so uh, all the day players in the picture are Cirque du Soleil people. The only actors are, you know, the grandparents, the kids. Uh, that that's it, you know, and the, you know, the pe various people playing, you know, Barney and Baby Bob and so forth. Um, anyway, so uh, you know, we had the, they gave us a lot of money. Uh, I I worked with the writer for a while, um, and and. My feeling, I had a very strong feeling. I mean, since I didn't share this with other adults that, you know, as I say, we were okay with Barney, but I knew that most adults, you know, hated Barney and they would just put their kids down and leave the room. So I said to the, you know, the Barney people that I said, look, we need to have a character in this picture who hates Barney. Look, pal, real dinosaurs don't talk and real dinosaurs don't laugh. <laughs> there aren't any real dinosaurs anymore. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm as real as your imagination. <laughs> and that's something that's yeah, very yeah, yeah. real. You know, parents in a movie theater, you're not going to put your kid down and go out to the lobby or go home. You know, you're going to sit and watch the movie. So I, I just felt like we needed somebody in the picture who, who the adults could relate to. What do you think you're doing? It, it, who, me? Yeah, you. At first, they were reluctant, you know. Um, but, you know, we talked about it, and I just, you know, I just felt strongly that, you know, it's, you know, they they were, they're aware. You know, Cheryl Leach, who, she invented Barney. She created Barney. Um, 
you know, Cheryl is very smart and, and she was great to work with. And, you know, she was on the set all the time. You know, she's aware, she was aware that, you know, a lot of adults hated Barney. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just this weird thing, right? It's like a thing, you know, that people they hate Barney. So, um, so she, she understood where I was coming from. Um, so, you know, she thought about it for, you know, maybe a couple of days, but then she said, yeah, you know, that's, that's a good idea. Uh, and that, you know, it became the plot, you know, where the, the original script, there wasn't, you know, the, the original script was, was kind of just a chase, but no, it was like nothing going on really, you know? Um, it was like a chase just for the, you know, just for the sake of it being a chase. I, I really hardly remember the original script except its length. And, and the, you know, the writer, you know, I mean, as I say, he, you know, he was a Barney writer. He, so he knew how to write for Barney. But, um, but you know, we needed to, you know, we wanted to do a, a feature, a big feature, you know, and a uh, different kind of, you know, the, the TV show doesn't have a plot. You know, I don't, I don't even know if they make the TV show anymore, but when they made it, you know, it's just, you know, um, songs and dances, little bits, you know, bits and pieces. Um, you know, we needed a plot that would hold, you know, for, you know, 90 minutes. And um, so that the chase, there was some reason for the being the chase. <laughs> it wasn't just people running around. Um, so, you know, that then we came up with the whole thing with the egg and, you know, what is it? And you know, just all that. I mean, you know, losing the egg. And, and to their credit, they, they accepted that. The Barney people, you know, accepted that. Uh, that was a good idea. Once they sort of understood where I was coming from, no, there was, they embraced the idea. And then, you know, then they really went with it and it, you know, became the movie. You know, it's not just having him, you know, not like him. I mean, that's kind of what the movie is about, you know, like, you know, learning to trust your imagination and, um, you know, that kind of, you know, I, it was, I mean, there's good things, you know, you know, good, good messages. So we rewrote the script and made it, you know, what it is, which is, you know, it's these, it's, it's a brother and sister and the sister's friend uh, coming to spend, you know, a few weeks with the, the brother and sister's grandparents uh, who live on, happen to live on an iconic farm <laughs> somewhere. So um, that, that was kind of, that was how it all started, you know, and, and they gave us, we had a very generous uh, schedule. Uh, they gave me time to rehearse. You know, because we not only had to rehearse the actors, you know, the kids, but we also had to, you know, work on the dancing. So also, you know, the Cirque du Soleil choreographer, uh, Deborah Brown, she um, she choreographed the numbers. And then we also, you know, sat down and talked about what what changes needed to be made, because, um, you know, the way the Barney costume worked in on the TV show um was you know there's a guy in the suit and another guy who speaks for Barney two two different people so and, and they didn't make any you know there I mean you know the Barney TV show was all on a set and we were going to be mostly you know out outside that wouldn't work for us we couldn't have a guy speaking you know let's say like a block away from you know the guy who's in the Barney suit we were able to to get them to, you know, slightly redesign the Barney outfit so that there's a speaker in it. So that, you know, the actor who's talking off stage for Barney is coming out of Barney's mouth, essentially. Um, and so it just made it easier to, you know, to, to shoot and to, you know, where they could walk around. And, you know, the, also the actors had an easier time just looking at, you know, the creature and not, you know, off to the side, you know, you know, it gets confusing. Anyhow, so then we all went up to Montreal, we rehearsed for a couple of weeks, and then we started shooting, you know, fairly short days, because, you know, just about every scene has the kids uh, in it. And so, you know, you can, we, I think I forget what our restrictions were, but it was maybe, you know, like a nine or a 10 hour day. Um, and then the other thing was, you know, the guys in the suits, um, they can, you know, they, they can't stay in them for very long. They're really hot. Um, in fact, in the, in the Barney costume, we had to, uh, in addition to the speaker, we also rigged a, um, like a cooling system in it, you know, it's like a very elaborate thing. <laughs> um, but 
you know, so, so, or else, I mean, cause we were shooting, you know, there were some days pretty hot and, you know, but we had to shoot. So we, you know, so between the kids and the people in the costumes, we, um, you know, our days, I mean, they probably were 10 hour days and, you know, mostly a shooting day on a, you know, most other pictures is like 13 hours. So anyhow, we, it was just, it was a smooth shoot. You know, the crew was great. People were in good, very good spirits. Um, I, we didn't have any hitches. In fact, we and then we had the, the restaurant scene is added. We, you know, um, we added that scene. We, you know, that was written while we were up there and built the set for it. And uh, because the, the, you know, the Barney people felt that, um, you know, we, we should have, I, I don't know, you know, they just had in their heads that we should have a, a scene where Barney's in a restaurant. So we came up with the idea, you know, it was like, okay, you, know, you want Barney in a restaurant? Fine. And we, I don't know, you know, we just fit it in the schedule and did it. So, you know, it was, it was that kind of shoot. It was like, it was, a, it was a very comfortable shoot. You know, there's some blow ups along the way, but mostly, you know, okay. Okay, Barney, you're really here because my imagination, then you're about to disappear. Cody! <laughs> I do not believe in you. Barney's relentless enthusiasm with this kid that hates him and his inability to even acknowledge insults with anything but love is Jesus-like. No wonder why the church was so afraid of him. The real world is perhaps too hardened and cynical for Barney, which is perhaps the point. In a world like ours, Someone as peaceful, loving, and in favor of alternative families sticks out like a big purple dinosaur. Yeah, look, you know, we got really good reviews. It was very, it was pretty funny. I mean, I, I mean, one of the reviews I remember was uh, it said, uh, it said this picture is much better than it needs to be. It <laughs> was a pretty interesting review. <laughs> I just it cracked me up. I think there was a couple of problems. One was it was kind of towards the end of Barney's popularity, you know, um, I, for whatever reason, uh, you know, things changed. So that that was part. But the other part was and the, the, that the studio people, I mean, one of, one of the studio guys came up to me. This was, I think I was back on the lot a few weeks after the picture opened and you know, I think we had lunch and he said, you know, he said, I, I think you did a really good job on that picture. He goes, but you know, but we only realized after you were in production that the, since the target audience for Barney is two to five year olds, it suddenly dawned on us that two to five year olds don't pay. You know, they get into movies free, <laughs> right? Five and under you go for free. So he said, so we realized when, you know, when you were way into it that we weren't going to make any money on this picture. And that was the case. You know, I mean, look, I don't know. I think it broke even finally. But, um, you know, it really depended on, um, you know, like VHS sales and stuff like that. I mean, that was the bigger m money maker, even though, you know, in terms of tickets, in terms of, of like tickets distributed. Uh, there was a, a lot of people who saw the film, but as I say, most of them didn't have to pay for it. So um, anyway, but uh, you know, the numbers were high, the numbers of bodies and seats, but you know, then it, it, you know, it sold a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, you know, cause it was VHS at that time. It was, you know, pre DVD. So, uh, uh, you know, they, they sold, I forget how many, but you know, in the hundreds of thousands of, of um, VHS cassettes. Actually, it's funny. I mean, I got a, an email uh, just two weeks ago from a student who's at Purchase now. You know, she just reached out and said, you know, um, I just I just found out, you know, you you went here, and I want to tell you, you know, I, I Barney was my favorite movie. I loved it when I was a little kid. You know, it, so that's it's nice to you know. You know, you, you know, you make a picture, it goes out. You don't have any, you know, you don't have anything to do with it anymore. And um, 
you know, you don't have, you know, they, they run the marketing stuff by you, but they really, the last person they really want to hear from is the director on how to market a picture, you know, because they feel like that's their thing, you know, they know how to do that. Um, but just, and that's also that extends to the studio. The studio was very good. I mean, they were very supportive, helpful. I, was, I mean, it was just every, the vibes were good on that picture. And, um, you know, it's not whenever I hear from people who, you know, mention it, it's, it's nice. You know, it's a good, it, it's, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad people enjoyed it and, uh, you know, seem to continue to be enjoying it at, to some degree. So, you know, and I think it did hit what we were hoping that, you know, it is, I mean, I've had a few people tell me, you know, that was the first movie I saw. So, you know, that's a good thing. Um, you know, in fact, I had a really, I've had a very, uh, like an hour long conversation, by the way, with Stanley Donan before we started. You know, and I, I, you know, I, I, someone arranged the call and I, you know, I've always admired his work and, you know, I told him what we were doing and I said, look, it's, you know, it's, it's a musical, there's dance numbers. In it. <laughs> so I wanted to like just pick his brain, you know, and say, hey, you know, how did you do this and that? He was terrific. He couldn't, he couldn't have been more uh, charming, gracious, uh, generous. And the, and he the, and he you know told me a lot of really really good stuff that was helpful, uh, and then there was it was you know he just also t- talked to me about how they did you know the pictures back then the musical pictures, and um, he said you know some I said like how much time did you spend you know um, rehearsing and then shooting I said like you know I forget what sequence I mentioned in one of the pictures and he said you know Steve it just doesn't. It's hard to compare, he said, because remember at that time, you know, the studio system was still uh, in effect. So he said, for instance, when we made um, Singing in the Rain, he said, if I, if I needed to do a reshoot with, you know, with Gene, all I had to do was, you know, get, you know, Gene was on the lot doing another movie. So, you know, they would just release him for half a day. He'd come over and we would do a scene. He said it was just very different then. And he said, so our schedule, I said, well, how many days on that? And he said, well, it's, it's hard to, you know, put it in those terms because, you know, we would drop and come back. I mean, it's interesting, you know, I, I, stuff that I didn't realize. And I'm, I, I'm really like a student. Of, you know, I love reading stuff about productions and, you know, how, how other people have worked. But, but Stanley Donan was very helpful. <laughs> and, you know, not, um, you know, he, was, he said, oh, you're doing a musical? Great. So, you know, we talked and, um, you know, I, forget, I don't remember how long we rehearsed, but Deborah, you know, choreographed really well. Uh, she came up with I thought, some terrific stuff. And the kids were great. You know, the kids were really, uh, you know, they're not kids anymore. You know, they're all, they're all adults now, but um, they, they really embraced it and just worked hard. Uh, you know, the, there was never any, you know, whining or complaining. They were they were really into it. So it was, it was, you know, it was a fun, it was fun. 